thank you so much for having me here. Uh, well, that's, uh, we had lots of interesting content already and uh, more to come after, after my talk. I will try to, to entertain you for the next 10 minutes on, on mostly addressing two topics, two important topics. The first one has already been addressed this morning. It's uh, about how open source is important for Europe. And the second one is uh, how we can see uh, European gaining leadership with open source. Um, I will be very fast on that one because it has, everything has been said today about this. So uh, my, my only comment is that, okay, software has eaten the world, and at the same time, open source became the foundation, not only for open source software, but also for modern business. And I have, I have a, bit, a bit more to say uh, about, about it. Um, one, one aspect is that, okay, everybody is using tons of open source so that developers can focus on, well, the 10% of uh, additional values that their customers or, or users care about. And that, that means that, okay, open source saves cost, reduces time to market, and also mitigates risks because we, we can leverage well-known uh, pre-built uh, blocks. Um, that, that has been discussed today. But uh, that's, that's really, when we talk about open source, sometimes we forget that it's really uh, about the four rules to study, um, well, use, sorry, use, <laughs> uh, I'm lost. Uh, use, study, modify, and freely redistribute your modifications. Um, that's, that's very fundamental. Uh, Simon Phipps uh, from, from OSI said it, uh, said it this morning, and, and we really need to stick about it, we, to stick to it. We had lots of uh, uh, talks about the CRA and how we are concerned by the CRA, because it, 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 uh, the concern is about the, the redistribution of, uh, of software. But, but really, we need to keep this, this, this capability to freely distribute software because that's, that's a better way to do, to do business. Um, just to come back to, to what we do at the Eclipse Foundation, um, we, our mission is, is really twofold. We foster our open source projects and communities, and also we foster the commercial ecosystem on top of our projects. So that we really work on enabling profitable commercial adoption of free software. We don't think that everything has to be open source. We think that everything that is in open source should be of good quality and should be well managed in open source. And, that, and that's very important because that enables companies to, have a, to set up business models to create products on top of open source. One thing we, we mentioned open washing today, and I think that um, one, we all have examples in mind of companies who have been claiming that they are good citizens of open source, and at some point decided to, to close their software. And I think that we, as a group, we need to, to take care of that and to make sure that we identify this, whether it's uh, as user of technologies, and and we, we do whatever we can to make sure that we don't fall in the trap. Another aspect I would like to, to approach, that has, that's, that's really the idea that open source enables the free flow of technology. Um, during the break, I was asked, so what do you think about uh, uh, restricting open source to Europe or something like that? We, we know that it's not a thing. European open source is not a thing. What is important is, is really to, to ensure that open source can, is, is, a, is a collaboration framework for worldwide and global collaboration. Um, and, you know, we need to, we need to, to think about how Europe can lead more in open source. And that's certainly not by putting barriers or by restricting the, how, we do, how we do open source. 
Here, I would like to tell you, you know, that, uh, that's a diagram from the, from the uh, study from Open Forum Europe and, and Fraunhofer that was published two years ago, I think. What's nice in this diagram is that we see that, on GitHub at least, the, the participation of European uh, companies or European citizens has been growing steadily over the last 10 years. And that's good, that's great. What, what uh, I heard also in this study is that it's mostly coming from, from small companies. And I think that that's an issue. That's an issue we need, to, we need to address because I really believe that we will be successful with open source only if we manage to, to really involve, involve the, the large companies. We need the large companies to embrace open source um, and, and that's the European large companies because if you think about it, we are all consuming open source that comes from individuals, small companies, and large companies. But today, the, the real contributors are, are large software companies. And I think that in Europe, we know we don't have really the large software companies in Europe. That's not a, that's not a scoop. But we have lots of industry players. And to come back to, to this idea that open source has eaten the world, um, the industry players have to care about open source because that's how they can consume uh, uh, software and how they can build software collaboratively. So I, th I think that we need to make sure that large companies embrace open source and, and that it will also be good news for the smaller actors, for the SMEs, because they are experts and they will get new business opportunities with those large companies. So I have good news is that, and I would like to illustrate that with, with one of our current initiatives, is that some large companies start doing that. Some industry companies start doing that. If you look at the logos, we have lots of companies that are really uh, core automotive companies, industry, core industry players. We have several OEMs, we have several tier ones, and some of them will be in the, in the panel after me. And <clears throat> that the way they approach it is really, okay, we need to do something to build a software-defined vehicle stack. And we want to do it with a code-first approach. We want to do it with uh, the open source way. And if you look at what we have been doing in the last 18 months, it's really um, organizing community days, having people coming together to present their project, having um, organizing hackathons. So that's really what, as open source people, we, we think is the right way, right way to do it. And in, in less than 18 months, we have more than 30 members. Um, we have mostly the, the center of gravity is European, maybe even German, uh, but we already have uh, members from Asia and, and the US, and, and that's growing. And this is not a toy. That's really a place where the automotive industry collaborates to build software that will be in your cars. That will take some time to get in your car, but that's, that's being built now. And what's interesting is that it has been very fast to establish the, the full collaboration framework. That was fast only because it was done by, by working with a well-established open source foundation like us. Um, and that brings me to the role of Open Source Foundation, which I think is important because sometimes, especially in Europe, when we talk about open source, we, we hear people thinking, okay, I will just push my code on GitHub or GitLab, I will put a license on the code, my developers will be happy because they can collaborate on, uh, on, on, on this communication platform, and that's it. But the point is that if you want to set up a collaboration between 
actors like that, you need to, to, have, to provide a governance, you need to provide a legal framework, you need to, to have a, an antitrust policy, for example. Um, you need to have a community of practice. And that requires processes to, to ensure that you know, the good principles of transparency, openness, meritocracy, and vendor neutrality are, are implemented. And that, that requires processes, but also some staff that knows how to do that. Because, you know, when you have, even, even when you have the processes, even when you have everything, there, there will potentially be, be uh, some partners who want to play with the rules, who want to, you know, just take advantage of the, of the, of the framework. And the fact that we have also experienced staff that has been doing that for, for years, it's, it's really a condition to, to safeguard the, the, invest, the investments of the users of the technology because they know the technology will be sustainable and also of the creators of the technology because they, they know the rules, they know how, how to engage with such a community. My last example is uh, another initiative so that's, to be honest, I don't like the name too much. That's the EU Cloud Edge IoT initiative. That's a bit long and you, well, but, but I, I like what we do in it. So that's, that's part of Horizon Europe that's supporting by, by two coordination and support actions. And, and we support 45 projects in improving the, their approach to open source. Um, we, we agree that cloud and IoT are dominated by open source and the goal is really to, to innovate in solutions for, for the continuum of, uh, of cloud to edge and, and IoT. And how do we approach that from, from our perspective? Is really, the idea is really to push to, to transform a part of the millions of euros of research funding that is investing in, invested in these uh, 45 projects um, in leadership in edge to cloud continuum through, through open source. Because I, I really believe that, of course, in this domain, at this level of the, of the architecture, um, most, most of the technologies will be open source. So if we fund researchers and um, companies to innovate in this domain, they have to publish their results in open source if they want to have a chance to to contribute to the, to the next uh, software stack. Otherwise, they will just, in a few years from now, they will, just, they will just put everything to trash and start consuming technologies that have been well prepared and well uh, published and uh, under open source because they will be easier to consume. So, my conclusion is um, on several points. One point is um, open source is good for business. Open source is also good for digital sovereignty. And um, in terms of digital sovereignty, I would like to give you my perspective on it. I think that uh, the interesting aspect of open source is that you move the needle from having access to proprietary IP on one side uh, to growing the skills to understand, to use, to master, to evolve, to create good open source software. And I think that we really need to figure out, I know that 2023 is the year of skills in Europe, we really need to figure out how to train uh, software developers in open source. That should be a, a strong requirement. Um, my second aspect is that, from policy point of view, that's really important to incentivize organizations, large organizations, large companies, small companies, universities, to, to produce open source, to publish open source, but not just to push it on a public repo. 
just really to, to also think about uh, the rules of engagement, the rules of participation. And finally, just, just my own words about uh, the CRA, we need to make sure that when we create regulations, we don't hinder the capability to collaborate in open source. I mean, we should not be schizophrenic by pushing open source on one side and on the other side, uh, setting up re uh, regulations that limit the capability to redistribute uh, open source software. Because the more open source software we will uh, create, the better it will be for us in this uh, software-defined world. Thank you.